Okay, I'm sitting here with Gal Lukowski, the very uh, famous Israeli screenwriter, and he has just been here in Nashville screening his film Walk on Water to an audience at Vanderbilt University. Gal was nice enough to sit down with us and answer a few questions while he's here. Hi, Gal, how are you? Hi, how are you, Karen? I'm great. Um, you know, I'm curious to know, you began your career in journalism, um, and you still, I think, are a pretty prolific writer. I'm curious to know um, how you transitioned, transitioned into writing a screenplay and, and working in film. Uh, it happened through my um, personal relationship. I mean, my spouse, I met up this guy. He was a film student, and we became a family. And uh, little by little, he was making his movies, and he started. I started helping, and at a certain point, he said, "Why don't I write the scripts for you?" And this is how it started. And do you foresee a long career in in uh, in staying in film? Uh, I've been doing it for more like more than ten years now, fifteen years now, as a, as a matter of fact. And I think I'll, I'll keep doing it. It's a nice thing. I love to write. My, uh, as a journalist, I wasn't like a, a scoop, political scoops journalist. I was a writer. So I think I define myself as a writer. So I like to write. And scripts are the best. Very good. Um, it's important for you, it seems, to feature gay characters in your films. Why is that? Well, you know, the, the big privilege of a filmmaker is that you create for two hours or three hours or whatever a world that didn't exist before and will never exist without you. And if I have the privilege to create a world, why should I create a world that doesn't have me in it? Good answer. Um, you know, we just finished watching your film Walk on Water and it seems that one of the themes that's um, woven into the script, in and out of the script, is a sort of about forgiving and perhaps even forgetting part of the past um, that can be painful. Um, my question to you is, what exactly is your thought on this theme um, pertaining to certain parts of the past that obviously maybe need to be forgiven in order to heal, but um, specifically when talking about perhaps um, you know, the Nazis in World War II, it's, it, we really can't forget, um, and it might be very, very hard to forgive. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, the word guilt, the word forgiveness, the word uh, um, forget, is, is, you can hear it very often through the movie, because this is one of the themes if you deal with Israel, with Israel's past, with Israel's future, there's a lot of of processing of the past that you should do. I think I I think that you know it's uh, it's a little abstract. It, it, there's no like strict answer about like you should forget this, this, and this, and you should you know keep this, this, and this, and then it will be fine. I think in a more abstract way, a more metaphorical way, um, you have to come to terms with the past. I mean, many years have passed. The people who run Germany these days are the third generation. Uh, the people who run Israel are the third generation now, fourth generation. So things can, you know, so the past gets a, a little different meaning. It's not that you should forget the past, but you should not let the past uh, lead your life, you know? Because, I mean, if you're the first generation of people who come from the Holocaust, this thing runs your life. It's bigger than you. But if you're the second and the third generation, then you can start controlling it and put it in the real right place where it belongs. Now, another interesting part of that, uh, there's a scene where this uh, Arab-Palestinian comes up to your Israeli main character and says, look, you need to forget um, the past and move on. But yet, also in this, in this film, we hear about multiple suicide bombers that are blowing themselves up and killing innocent Israelis during the same time. I think, How do you... that, I think that there is... I don't think these two things are connected. I think that part of Israel's uh, dealing with the Palestinian issue 
is that you cannot do the, the dealing with this issue from the point of view that, oh, we suffered so much in World War II, uh, so everything, you know, so we are so frightened and we are so fragile that, you know, that, that we are afraid of everything. Israel is a very strong nation, has a strong army, and the, the, the fact that like 70 years ago Jews were killed in gas chambers does not apply to Israel today. They're, with all due respect, you know, Israel is a very, very strong country with a very strong army, and this is the way things should be dealt from this point of view, and not from the point of view of like, oh my God, if we don't pay attention for one second, we're back in the, in the camps with the gas chambers. And I think that this paranoid way of thinking that all the Arabs are going to come very soon and throw all the Israelis to the sea and drown them, it's, it's not a good way of thinking about, about Israel or about life in general. Sure, I agree. And that actually leads me to my next question. Um, I just wanted to get your personal opinion on the current political situation in Israel. Uh, this is like an official interview for an official website. Maybe I shouldn't say what I think. I think it's terrible. I think that all these laws that all these people are like trying to, to put through in the Knesset are... Are, it's not even a disgrace, you know, because it's a disgrace. I mean, it's, it's, there is a big part of the Israeli public who somehow thinks, or was led to think, or was manipulated to think, that Israel is, is, is too democratic, and that democracy is not the right way, and that through some laws you can change the whole... Like, you can put on laws that will change Israel forever, and and these people are trying to put on these laws, and this is like, I don't know, I don't know. Um, we're talking about Germany. Some of the laws that they, that they are trying to, to, to put through the Knesset nowadays are not that far from German laws of the Second World War, with all due respect. I mean, I don't want to... Um, um, do wrong to the to the memory of the Holocaust, etc. I don't think you should you should compare the Holocaust to anything. Still, when you say Arab people can you create this law that Arab people will not be able to be judges in the High Court of Israel because of all these regulations, this is Germany. When you decide that like somebody who's an Israeli citizen, he pays taxes, he's a regular Israeli citizen, and he, and a regular Israeli citizen. And he's not able to be a judge in the High Court of Israel just because he's Arab. This is like, this is apartheid, this is racist, this is, uh, um, this is Germany. I mean, you, there's no other way to, to, uh, to tackle it or to look at it. These laws are not passing yet. Most of them are somehow, you know, the government manages to but they come from, from the party of the Prime Minister, they come from the party of the Foreign Minister. It's not that like all of them come from these like crazy right-wingers. So it's very depressing. Actually, it's very depressing. If you, if you think of it, if you stop and think about it for a moment and you look at it like as it is, it's very depressing. And what are um, some of the other major issues right now in, in Israel that um, you spend a lot of time thinking about that you might want to bring to the forefront in your future projects, both in cinema and in television? I don't. I don't. I don't think that like things that happen in politics should so fast become movies. You have to like grasp them a little and let them let them have a life of their own. But. Uh, um, I think all the other issues are not as major as this issue. This is the only issue, that, the issue that we talked about, like these laws, these undemocratic laws, these are, these are the main issue. The whole thing about like the, the social revolution that, that took place in the summer in Israel, is, it's a little different. It's, it goes, it's very important, the, 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 the whole uh, way of determining whether the Israeli economy should be more socialist oriented or more more like capitalist like more like America like the US it's major it's major questions but uh, but
but they're not, you know, but they're not as fundamental as this first question that we just discussed. Okay, good. Anything else you want to add? Israel is a very nice place. I love Israel. I'm Israeli. I cannot live anywhere else. Even if it becomes this crazy, like, I don't know, this crazy banana republic, I will not leave it, I think, because I will not be able to survive outside Israel. I mean, in the deeper sense of the word. And so I have to do everything in my powers to make sure that Israel will stay this nice place that it is and become a much nicer place and that we will end occupation and create this two-state solution, these two states, next to each, one next to each other, and uh, we'll have a happy life there. Okay? Sounds good to me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your time, Gal. Thank you.